It is 649. This is your morning in eight minutes. The results are in for the 2023 Knoxville primary election. The two candidates with the most votes in the primary will now move on to the general election in November. For the race for mayor and municipal judge, if one of the candidates gets 50% plus one, that means that that candidate wins. Incumbent Mayor India King Cannon is reelected. She's set to be have a second term. After getting 58% of the total votes, it is term limited to just two terms. This will be her second and final term. There are several other races in the Knoxville primary election, including three seats in Knoxville City Council. First is Knoxville City Council at large seat. Lynn Fugate and Cameron Brooks will move on. City Council at large seat B is ready for the general election with only two candidates. And Knoxville City Council at large seat C, Amelia Parker and Tim Hill are both set for the general election. For the Knoxville Municipal Judge race, John R. Rawson and Jr. and Tyler Cabanis are the top two vote getters. We will move on to the general election. This was a really close race. The first time John Rawson has had an opponent since 2003. He's held the position for 35 years. Tyler Cavanis trailing by just over 200 votes. Judge Rawson and Cavanis will face off on November 7th. We have all the results for you right now inside your WVLT News app. Just look for election results. And right now, KPD needs your help finding this woman. This is Mary Crippen. She was reported missing last Monday. She was last seen in the 2400 block of East Magnolia at an abandoned property in June. Her family last spoke with her in early July. Mary's 61 years old, 5 foot 7, 120 pounds with brown hair. If you know anything about where she may be, please call Crime Stoppers. Crews are still working to put out the fire burning at Scott Plastics in Newport. Now that fire's been burning now for more than 33 hours. Officials say it started in the back of the recycling warehouse around 8 o'clock Monday night. And a production manager told us there was a small fire earlier in the day that led to evacuations. And about a couple hours later, it caught fire again, and crews have been working to stop it since. They say it could burn for another 24 to 48 hours. Nobody is hurt. We asked if the smoke in the air is dangerous and officials say nothing is a danger to the public as of now, but any smoke is bad for you. The owner of Scott Recycling tells us it'll take weeks to get back to work. In Bell County, Kentucky, a Lexington woman is charged for her connection in a deadly officer involved shooting. We brought you this story yesterday morning. No officers are hurt. The shooting happened Monday night around 7 at a home on Highway 221 in Bell County. A 47 year old Rebecca Caldwell is now facing several charges, including criminal facilitation to commit murder and hindering apprehension. Officials say she lied to deputies when they came to the home looking for Paul Holland the armed and dangerous suspect that we told you about. Well, authorities say he shot at deputies before taking off Friday night. Investigators say when police came looking for Holland, Caldwell told them he wasn't there, even though he was hiding behind a nearby vehicle with two handguns. That investigation continues. The name of the person who was shot has not yet been released. We'll keep you updated. Well, three Claiborne County inmates are charged in connection to the stabbing of a correctional officer. It happened last week. Officials say the officer was stabbed in the ear by Austin Greer with an item he made into a weapon. Greer is charged with conspiracy to commit aggravated assault with a deadly weapon against an officer. Both 29-year-old Bobby Lawson and 31-year-old Joshua Foister are facing the same felony. Officials say the officer is expected to recover. The state special session on public safety is officially over. Lawmakers won't be back on Capitol Hill until January of next year. Chaos erupted yesterday morning after House Speaker Cameron Sexton, Sexton adjourned. House Republicans and Democrats say they felt like more could have been done. So here's what's happening now. Four bills. So we got four bills out of this session. They're now headed to the governor's desk. They provide more funding focused on public safety, including $30 million towards safety improvements at public Tennessee colleges and universities, $30 million to mental health services, and more than a million dollars for a campaign educating the public on gun locks. Well, right now, six people, including four children, are recovering after a multi-vehicle crash involving a school bus. This happened in Nashville yesterday morning. Metro police say the driver of this WeGo bus is seriously hurt after drifting into the wrong lane and hitting that school bus. Two SUVs were also part of the crash. The driver and passenger in one of them should be okay after being sent to the hospital. Ten children were on the school bus. Four are hurt, but the good news is they're expected to be okay. Hurricane Idalia is expected to make landfall in Florida this morning as a Category 4 hurricane. And millions of people who live near the state's Gulf Coast are bracing for the storm. Take a look at this live cam. This is in Steinhatchee. Forecasters say the storm could bring a potentially deadly storm surge. U.S. Coast Guard units and National Guard troops 
are prepared for search and rescue operations. We've been keeping an eye on some of these live cameras. You can barely see this yeah. morning as that storm gets closer. Now, thousands of electricity workers are also standing by to help restore power quickly after that hurricane passes. Several major airports in Florida are closed, including Tampa's. Medicare says it'll start negotiating prices on 10 drugs as part of its mandate to lower prescription prices for older Americans. The Biden administration says it chose the medications because they're some of the most expensive covered by the health insurance program for seniors over 65. It includes blood thinners and medications that treat conditions like diabetes, cancer and heart disease. Negotiated prices won't take effect until 2026. It is 654. We do want to get a look at your first alert traffic with Whitney. Taking a live look now at I-40 right around 275 in Knoxville this morning. You can see that volume building on the westbound side of the interstate. We do have a couple of vehicles on that right hand shoulder on the eastbound side. The good news is no lanes are blocked if you are headed that way. You are still beating the morning rush if you're just getting out the door. I-40, I-75, 640 all running on time. But heads up on Kingston Pike. There is going to be some road work starting up at 9 9 o'clock between Northview Street and Newcomb Avenue. This is going to impact the westbound lanes of Kingston Pike with some lane closures. So be mindful of crews and delays. Your first alert forecast with Chief Meteorologist Heather Haley. 655 now seeing and feeling some changes today between the cold front that passed through with yesterday's storms trying to settle in and then catching some outer bands of clouds and winds from Hurricane Idalia. So right now we actually have scattered clouds moving into the valley. See a few more on the plateau now. Still thicker clouds over the Smokies with some stray rain still only in Cott County to Greene County. Now where you've had some more clearing, that's where you have some more fog between Cumberland and Fentress and Wayne to McCurry, Scott. Whitley to Knox County, Kentucky, also cooler behind that front. 59 to Monticello to 64 Crossville, 70 still Knoxville to 71 Pigeon Forge. So we are seeing those extra clouds in and out of our area at times. I think some are a little more partly cloudy north and west to mostly cloudy, especially midday through the afternoon. That'll put us at 77 at noon with those extra winds and a high of 81 with lower humidity. So really the gusts pick up 15 to 20 miles per hour starting this morning, but really into the afternoon to evening they will continue. And that's because of that pull into Idalia, increasing those winds out of the northeast. But as I mentioned, the decrease is in the humidity. So that is also thanks to that front. So hopefully this at least puts a smile on your face. You may not be seeing as much sunshine today, but that is about to change. Tomorrow is the day that's all clear. That gives us that cooler morning. I'm looking forward to that part the next couple of days. So we'll talk more about that cool down ahead coming up on the CW. All right, Heather, thank you very much. We're also going to have live cameras of the communities. Um, the impending impact of Hurricane Idalia in Florida coming up on the CW.